In a previous video in our series, we discussed the Dell operator and the gradient. We had an introductory video on that subject, and we derived this equation that the differential change of any scalar is equal to the dot product of its gradient with the differential change in the position vector. And this video we're going to rely upon that knowledge base and consider what happens when the scalar function is a constant. Uh, by the way, the uh, playlist for all the videos in the vector analysis series is at the website digital-university.org. Now, this is just for a two-dimensional case. So a two-dimensional scalar is just a function of x and y, and it might be then just some curve. And here would be position vectors going out from the origin to the curve. Pretend that these position vectors are very close together so that the distance between them is a differential displacement, dr. And this differential displacement of the position vector will be tangent to the curve at that point. Now, what we explained back in our introductory video concerning the del operator and the gradient was that this dot product tells us that the change in the scalar is equal to the magnitude of its gradient vector times dr times the cosine of the angle between them. And of course the cosine of 0 is 1, otherwise it's a fraction. So when there is no angle between dr, this should be not a vector now, just a magnitude, when there is no, co when there is no angle between the gradient and the displacement vector, meaning that the displacement vector is pointing in the same direction as the gradient, then this has its greatest value because the cosine of theta is 1, with theta equals 0. So what it means is that the gradient vector, its magnitude and its direction, tells us the greatest rate of space change for our scalar. And again, that we had discussed in the introductory video concerning the Dell operator and the gradient. Now, in this video, we want to consider a three-dimensional vector. Say we have a function of x, y, and z. Maybe our function is something like 3 x minus 4y plus 2 times z is equal to some constant. Say this equals 1. So now this is our scalar. Obviously a function of x, y, and z. And when this is equal to a constant. This defines then, of course, some three-dimensional surface. Well, on that three-dimensional surface, the scalar is equal to a constant. So this is going to be 0. Now, in the two-dimensional case, we just had a simple space curve here, or just a simple curve on the xy plane. We have our position vector, and again, the differential displacement of our position vector is tangent to the curve at that point. Now, when we have a three-dimensional surface, where anywhere on the surface our function or our scalar is a constant, so anywhere on the surface its differential was 0. Now we have two position vectors going from the origin up to the surface. And again, pretend these are very close together. So this is a differential displacement, dr. And this differential displacement of the position vector, that's tangent to the surface 
at that point. Now, indeed for our three-dimensional surface, for this particular case where 3x minus 4y plus 2z equals 1, but anywhere on any particular three-dimensional surface, its scalar function is a constant. So this is 0. So that implies then that the gradient is perpendicular to the differential displacement. It's perpendicular to the differential of the position vector dr. And this is tangent to the surface at some point, just like in the two-dimensional case. The differential displacement, the position vector, is tangent to the curve at that point. Here, it's tangent to the surface at that point. So, if the gradient vector is perpendicular to this, making this zero, because the scalar is a constant, then of course that tells us that the gradient being perpendicular to this, the gradient is perpendicular to the surface at that particular point. So if we want to find a normal vector to our three-dimensional surface, we can find it then by determining its gradient vector. So. Let's see how that would apply to this problem. We have our scalar is 3x minus 4y plus 2z. That equals a constant, so this is 0. What is its gradient? So we have the del operator. That's the partial with respect to x times the unit vector i plus the partial with respect to y, the unit vector j. We're in three dimensions now. For the partial with respect to z times the unit vector k. Now psi, or our del operator, operating on this particular scalar, the partial of this with respect to x, that's just 3, so we have 3i with respect to y minus 4j, and the partial with respect to z, that's 2. So this vector is perpendicular everywhere to this particular three-dimensional surface. So a unit normal vector Of course, that's just the scale, or that's just the gradient divided by the magnitude of the gradient. And here the magnitude will be the square root of 4 plus 16 is 20 plus 9 is 29. So for our particular problem, this would be 1 over the square root of 29 times and that would be our normal unit vector for this particular three-dimensional surface. And really that's all there is to it. It's realizing first of all that we have a three-dimensional surface that our scalar is going to be equal to some constant so that its differential is 0, implying that these are perpendicular and realizing that the displacement here, or the differential displacement of our position vector, that's tangent to our surface, just like it's tangent to the curve. So therefore, if this is perpendicular to that, this would be perpendicular to the surface. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and take some more complicated examples. So join us for those videos, and we'll continue on here with our discussion.